why index in Word? We encourage indexing in Word at Cambridge because we've found that it brings significant benefits in terms of speedier production and higher quality in both the print and electronic versions of our titles. Because we create the index at an earlier stage, the latest point would be during the copy editing stage. The index will be in place on the page proofs, meaning that the entire book can be proofread at this stage and any errors caught easily. Because the word indexing tool links the index entries to a specific destination within the text in electronic versions of the book, like this Adobe book, clicking on the index entry will take the reader to the exact point in the text that they want to read. As you can see here, we can find the name we're looking for, very easily. It also has benefits for the printed book, as it means that the index could be updated automatically in the rare event that significant changes to the proofs altered the page numbering. Before you get started with your index, it's worth putting some thought into what you want to include in the index. Make sure you have reviewed our style and content guidelines. These will advise you on what you should and should not include how to structure your index and deal with indexing figures, tables and proper names and how to choose the most helpful headings. Above all, the index should be clear and useful for the readers so it may be useful to review indexes in similar titles or consider what is likely to be the salient information for the readers of your book. Indexing in Word involves two basic procedures. Firstly, identifying and tagging the entries in the document, building the index as you go. Once you've done this, second step is to insert the index itself at the end of the Word document. There is an option at this point to make changes to formatting to the index if necessary. I'll explain how to do this in the most efficient way later. If you want to index something exactly as it is typed in your document, the easiest way to do this is to select the text in Word. Then hold down together Alt, Shift and X to bring up the indexing dialog box. As you can see, the word we've got is our index term in the main entry box. If you're happy with it and don't need to edit it, you can press Mark. This will index this instance of the word. Now we can keep the dialog box showing and continue to navigate through the text while it's there. Or you can get rid of it for now if it's distracting you and call it back up with Alt, Shift, X when you need it. You'll see that the text now has some formatting applied to it. This is useful in that it can show you where items have already been indexed. However, if you want to switch it on and off at any time, you use the paragraph mark here to toggle it on and off. You'll see here this very tempting button that says Mark All. This might seem like an enticing way of getting the index done faster, but we strongly discourage using it as it will index every single instance of a term and that is rarely desirable in an index. You could use it if you know for certain that a term only shows up a handful of times and that they should all be indexed. However, if you use it for anything used more commonly, like here we're going to mark the word Kafka in this book about Kafka and then generate your index. We'll go through how to do this later. You may end up with a large list of page entries in the index like this that will clutter it up with what may be just passing mentions of the word. This can be enormously frustrating for the reader to have to navigate their way through these. As you can see from the final ebook version, for topics or names mentioned frequently in the book, the index needs to pick out the relevant areas and divide them up with subheadings to point the reader to the right place. Using Mark All might seem like a sensible shortcut, but if you end up with long strings of page numbers, it might ask you to add in sub-entries and remove the irrelevant entries. This can end up being more time-consuming than if you'd avoided using Mark All in the first place. If you want to index a theme or concept that is discussed in the text but is not explicitly named in the text, like colour film in this example. All you need to do differently is place the cursor next to a word in the location you want to index, like here. Hold down Alt, Shift and X to bring up the indexing dialog box and then type in the term you wish to use. Then press Mark as before to mark this instance. So now we've seen how to index terms exactly as they appear in the text and how to index themes or concepts.
Next, we're going to cover something that is a vital part of creating a user-friendly and helpful index, indexing a longer span of text to produce a page range in the finished index. It's necessary to use this if the subject you want to add the index is discussed for more than about a sentence or so in the book. It's important to do this where there is a longer discussion, rather than indexing individual mentions on separate pages, as it signals to the reader that this is an ongoing discussion and that the information they are looking for is spread over a few pages. This involves an extra step, but it's quite a straightforward procedure. So, let's say we want to index a lengthy discussion of Kafka's relationship with Dora Diamond, which starts here. We select all the text we want to include under Dora Diamond, ending here. The extra step with indexing a span of text is that we create a bookmark first by going to the Insert tab and choosing Bookmark. We give our bookmark a unique name. As you can see, there are some here already. We'll call this Dora. The names don't matter as long as each piece of text you bookmark has a unique name that you can find easily. When you're happy with a name, click Add to save the bookmark. Now to add the bookmark text to the index and create a page range in the finished product, put the cursor at the end of the text you selected, like so. Then we're back to the usual indexing process, bringing up the dialog box with Alt, Shift, X. And as before, we add in the name of the entry as we want to see it in the index. Where the process is different is that we then need to click on Page Range and then locate the name of our bookmark in the drop-down menu and Finding Dora. And then as usual, clicking on Mark. Where there are likely to be more than seven page references for a subject or where you want to index a larger subject and break it down into smaller subjects, you'll need to include sub-entries. In our example, we would want to index Nickelodeons, but place it under the more general heading of cinemas, so we'd start by selecting the term, and then call up the dialog box as before, with Alt, Shift and X. Our main entry will be cinemas, so we'd want to type that in, and then add Nickelodeons as the sub-entry. I've pasted it in. Should you want the page number to appear in italic or bold, for example, if you're indexing an illustration, you have the option to do this here, before clicking Mark, as in the usual process. As you can now see in the codes included in the text, we've got the main entry and the sub-entry, which is handy if you want to remember how you've indexed something later. Another feature we'll need in our index is cross-references. For example, to direct the reader from a specific term they might search for, to where it is included under a more general heading. In this case, we want to make sure that people looking for Kafka's novel, The Trial, under the German name, are directed to the entry under its English name. So we'd start by selecting the German name, and bring up the dialog box. We adjust the main entry field so it will appear in the correct order in the index, and select Cross Reference. Then type in the name of the entry we're referring the reader to. We don't use quotation marks for names or titles as they interfere with the alphabetization of the index, but for titles of books, plays, films, etc., we use italics. You do this by selecting the words first, and then right clicking to produce a choice of options. We need font. We choose italic and then go to OK. Then click Mark as usual to see our cross reference show up in the text. Doing this won't put a page number next to der process. So if you want to add a page number and direct the reader to where the main index entry for the book is, you simply click Mark before creating the cross-reference, like this. The only difference with this is that, if you provide the reader with a page number here, your cross-reference is suggesting that they also go to another section of the index, so we'd use See Also. Again, we adjust the font for the title. You will get a chance to edit the text in the index at the end. So if you'd rather not interrupt your indexing flow to adjust formatting, I'll explain how to do this next. At the end of going through your text and indexing individual terms, concepts and spans, you'll need to generate the index list at the end of your document. It can also be helpful to do this periodically as you go, 
to check that it looks like the way you expect it to. But when you've finished, you'd need to do this one more time to ensure that your final index appears at the end. To do this, locate the very end of your book and any references or bibliography and place the cursor at the very end. Then find References in the top toolbar and choose the option Insert Index. No need to adjust any of the settings, just click OK and Yes if it asks if you want to replace the existing index. It might take a few seconds to generate the index, but then it will appear at the end of the document. Assuming we're happy with the end product and don't want to add any more references, we'd save the document and then copy just the index list by selecting it and copying it using either Ctrl and V or right-clicking to choose Copy and then pasting it into a separate Word document so we can attend to any outstanding formatting issues. Here's our new document. Now, to ensure that the typesetter takes in any editing we do to the index list, we need to turn on the Track Changes tool. This is a vital step. We find it under Review and select it like this. We can then make changes to the formatting as needed. We can't adjust page numbers or what is coded using this method. That needs to be done using the procedure explained earlier in the video. But cosmetic changes can be done here, for example adding some italics we missed, or making an adjustment to the order or organisation of the headings. Once this is finished, save this document and make sure that you send this along with the full index manuscript to your contact at the press. Now you've seen all the steps involved in creating an index, here are a few quick tips to get things right and save time and effort later. As you can see here, some book titles were originally indexed with quotes around them and this has confused words very pedantic alphabetization and now they all appear before A in the index list. The best way to avoid this is to avoid using quotes. But if you get to the end and you find this has happened, you can adjust the formatting in the separate track changes document we showed you earlier and the changes will be taken in by the typesetter. Secondly, as you can see in this index, accident has shown up as a main heading a number of times. It may make more sense to have accident as the main heading and the other items as sub-entries. Again, ideally, this would be an ongoing process as you go through the text, but it is also fairly easy to make changes on the separate track changes document if you decide later that you want to change it. Finally, as we've covered before, long strings of page numbers with no subheadings can be very frustrating and unhelpful for readers, so to avoid this situation in the finished index, we'd suggest using subheadings as you go along to produce a more helpful entry for the reader, as in the finished ebook. We recommend doing this as you go, as it can be more difficult to fix after you've finished. I hope this has been helpful to you. Don't forget to refer to the written instructions you'll have been provided and remember that your press contact can assist with queries and get samples of your index checked to see if you're on the right track. So do get in touch if anything is unclear.